What is poppin' y'all? It's your man Clapboy Bales and welcome to another episode of Wisco Sports Weekly. Today's episode, I think we're going to be talking Bucks today. Honestly, this has been a kind of quiet off season. Nothing major compared to what, you know, what happened last year, you know, with we all know trading for uh, Damian Lillard. But this is a very um this is a very interesting year for the Bucks because I feel like a lot of people are starting to kind of think that we might be, if we don't win the championship this year, this coming season, a lot of people are starting to believe that this, the rebuild could come very soon, which I hope is not true because I don't want that to happen. I, I deep down do not want that to happen right now. I know we are capable of winning another championship. Obviously, Boston locked in all their guys for pretty much the next four years. Um, obviously, they're going to have that core four for like the next four years. And, you know, that's going to be hard because obviously everyone's going to fear the Celtics. Then you move on to the um, 76ers, another team that obviously is... Um, going to be a threat because they brought a lot of people back and they also signed Paul George. So that's going to be very difficult. Obviously another big weapon for the Sixers. And then the rest of our, obviously the Bucks. you know, what do you do? You know, you got Giannis, you got Dame, you got Middleton, you got Lopez, you got that core of four. But everybody that was part of this team, you know, last year departed, you know, the only people that kind of were are still part of the team are the core players that have kind of been there since the whole beginning of this. The, I call it the era where they started to finally be good. Giannis, obviously, you know, he's going to... He, this is a big year, you know, because a lot of people are speculating this could be it. This could be... This could be it, you know. Like, if things don't work out this year, they could totally rebuild... They could trade every. They could trade Giannis. They could trade Damian Lillard away. Bunch of draft picks are gonna come, because clearly, as you could see, they keep they've traded so much away to get, and it's starting to like, it's it's just starting to kind of look like they're, it could happen. But I don't want to think that. Obviously, let's talk about the draft first. Um, the only reason why I had those thoughts. It's because our first round draft pick was AJ Johnson, a guy that wasn't even projected to even be drafted this year. Came only played one year in out of out of sea out of state out of out of out of the country, and um, averaged like two points a game. I didn't know much about him. Now I've been watching a little summer league. There, everybody on that team right now is absolute trash. <laughs> But the last game, AJ Johnson actually looked pretty freaking good. I mean, he looked like he could be a legit player down the road. I can't believe he's young, but man, he could totally turn out to be a great player. I don't think he'll get much playing time this year, but in the future, I think he totally can. Our other first round, other draft pick was in the second round, which we got with the whole Damian Lillard trade, and that was um, forward Tyler Smith, likely going to be a center, backup center at some point. But yet again, another guy that I think has mechanics. He's supposed to be good on defense. We'll see how he does. I'm not sure about him as a per as a player yet, but we have a lot of guys in our you know our two way system, or you know these young guys, you know. Obviously, I'm kind of giving up on Bochamp at this point. I thought, you know, I always kept saying he's going to have a high ceiling, but he, I think he's reached it, and I just don't think he's ever going to kind of climb out of that. But Ajax, Andre Jackson Jr., Chris Livingston, AJ Green, you know, those are some guys, you know, that were dra you know, drafted in the last couple of years. I really want them to kind of get some more playing time next year. I kind of really hope that we implement these guys because I know Doc Rivers is not not for playing younger type players he always kind of prefers veterans over those but I really want him to really implement you know because like AJ Green can just knock down some shots and Ajax really showed got some minutes in the postseason and he really showed that he could ball and that's definitely something you know I want to hopefully see in the future those younger guys contributing 
obviously, we need some peak guys that obviously can play defense. You know you're starting four. You know, you need, obviously, the shooting guard spot is obviously open. Obviously, they needed a backup point guard because, but most importantly, a guard that plays defense and also a two-way player that's more of like a three and D type player. The guys that obviously we lost, three, most importantly, we lost three guys in free agency. Malik Beasley, Patrick Beverly, and Jay Crowder. First, obviously, we addressed the backup point guard situation. Obviously, they started Beverly, and then they hadn't come off the bench at certain times this season. But Beverly announced that he was going to be playing overseas. So I guess that he's out of the question um, cause I guess maybe they wanted him and I think that's why they were waiting. I'll, I'll get, obviously get to the other news that kind of just happened recently. Um, but they went after DeLon Wright. They finally signed DeLon Wright. Somebody that I've been hoping the Bucks go after for the longest time. He was the number one person on my list last year because I was like, we need a backup point guard that can play defense or maybe he could start. But they went with Beverly and I guess it worked good but unfortunately you know he obviously decided to depart to another country which meant you know Delon Wright was the first guy they signed he was a one-year deal I think these are the prove it type deals you know that they obviously sign with these people but this is smart I mean Delon Wright can play defense he really showed up when he was with Miami Heat he obviously started the season with the Washington Wizards got traded to the Heat he was the number one guy on my trade resume I last year I'm really happy about, you know, that we finally have him because this is a guy that can actually really do a lot for the team. We needed a backup point guard, and that pretty much gave us that role that we needed, hopefully, because the, all the backup point guards that we've had just don't play good defense, and we finally got a guy who can actually play defense. So how about that? Then the next guy that they lost in free agency, Jay Crowder. We thought Jay Crowder was going to be a 3 and D type player, and he just was useless. He did absolutely nothing. I don't know why he was even on the team. I thought he was going to actually have a role. You know, like, for example, two years ago, he just did nothing, you know, and then Budenholzer got fired. I was thinking he was going to not come back, but then obviously he decided to come back because new coach, but it just, I don't think he ever has a role, and to be fairly honest with you, I don't. I do not see him playing on another NBA team this year. He just, I don't think he has game anymore. He's completely lost his playing ability, and it's really sad to see that. Um, but in the meantime, we decided to replace them with Torian Prince, another guy who's great at defense and shooting threes. It's a great move because, obviously, he was with Darvin Ham. We brought back Darvin Ham to be our top assistant coach, which obviously is great news because he was a great assistant coach back when we won our chip. Um, and Torian Prince was a guy who really got a lot of playing time with Darvin Ham. It's a great move because he was actually a very great role player for the Lakers last year. I think definitely coming off the bench as a 3 and D type player, it's definitely a good move because we need someone like that. Technically, he's taking Crowder's spot, but Torian Prince, I think, is a definite better score than Crowder, so this is a better move for the long run. And then the most recent move that just happened yesterday, the Bucks signed a one-year deal for Gary Trent Jr., a guy I've been wanting the Bucks to go after for the longest time. Likely, he will be the starting shooting guard right next to Damian Lillard, where he actually spent a lot of time with Damian Lillard back when he was on the Portland Trail Blazers. Um, but yeah, yet again, I mean, Damian Lillard and Jerry Trent were a good complemented duo. I mean, they lost... And obviously Trent ended up getting traded because, you know, they realized how good he was and they wanted obviously a better player that fit their system in return, which is why they traded him to Portland for, no, Toronto for Norman Powell. It made sense. He was actually a great player for Toronto last year. I mean, he averaged 18 points a game, I think, like two years ago. Last year was unfortunately 13 points a game, but a lot of it had to do with a lot of the changes that kind of were being implemented within the team. They were obviously rebuilding a lot. A lot of the people on the team that were really scoring a lot of points, obviously, were like Scotty Barnes, R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quigley. So pretty much Trent's role was kind of getting a little bit diminished. But this is a guy who's a 10 times better defender than Malik Beasley. I mean, 
you you can't say that. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's about shooting is better, but he if he produces spacing and can shoot, I mean, I f- I feel confident he can knock down the shot, and that's definitely something I was hoping we were gonna get for a very very long time. So that being said, our starting lineup will likely be Damian Lillard at the point guard, Gary Trent at the shooting guard, Middleton at the small forward spot. Now hopefully he should be ready to go at the start of season. It was updated today that he got some arthroscopic surgery on both his ankles. Hopefully, and he should be fine. It's just removing tissue, so it shouldn't be an issue. And uh, Giannis at the point guard, and Giannis, uh, Giannis at the power forward, and Brooke at the center spot. Obviously, Connaughton and um, Portis, obviously, still with the team, will be obviously coming off the bench along with Prince, right? And maybe some of those younger guys like Ajax or AJ Green or... Bo Champ, or maybe some of the rookies. You never know what'll happen. But I think that is it for when it comes to signing free agents. There's not really many big other names available. I don't think they really have enough room for those spots. But what could happen is, you know, the talk is they, you know, there's a lot of people that want Brooke traded. There's a lot of people that want Pot Connaughton traded. There's a lot of people that want Portis even traded. And I think, you know, they're thinking, you know what, if we trade these guys, we could get a superstar out of it. And as much as I want to say they could do that, it could be a huge risk. Because when they traded for Damian Lillard, there was no, the chemistry wasn't there yet. They lost Drew Holiday, who had the best chemistry with Giannis. Damian Lillard and Giannis still didn't have his best chemistry. Now, I think they're going to definitely work on that this offseason. And definitely, I think they're going to be a lot better because look at what happened with the uh, D- Dallas uh, Mavericks. They traded for Kyrie Irving to match up with Luka Doncic and the chemistry was terrible and they missed out on the playoffs because of it. And then now the following year they make the NBA Finals. I think a very similar thing is going to happen with the Bucks. I think the chemistry's there. They got the defensive juggernauts. My guarantee is that they make a trade at the trade deadline to get a, a good name player that can help them win. But Let's be fair. We don't know what's going to happen because no one had any idea they were trading for Lillard. And, you know, I hope for the best. But anything can happen. If there are more updates or anything that crazily happens, obviously I'll make a video on it. But in the meantime, if you like what you see, subscribe below, comment with your thoughts. And as always, go Bucks. We will see you next time.